In this lesson, we're going to talk about multiplying integers. Now, there's really four cases that are possible when you're multiplying two integers. You could either have a positive times a positive, positive times a negative, a negative times a positive, or a negative times a negative. And so we'll explore all four of those. Um, the first one, uh, taking a positive times a positive, there's really not a lot of mystery to what's going on here. Oops, there we go. We saw things like this uh, back in chapter 1. So in chapter 1, all we knew was the whole numbers, and so we understood that uh, we could multiply them. And, of course, when we took something like 5 times 5, that gave us a positive 25. So no big surprise there that when you take a positive times a positive, you get a positive as the result. Now, a positive times a negative, let's take uh, 3 times negative 5 as an example. Let's remind ourselves of the definition of multiplication. Remember, multiplication is just repeated addition. So when I say 3 times negative 5, that's like saying take 3 negative 5s and add them together. Well, from our knowledge of integer addition, we know that we just add up those absolute values and attach the shared sign of a negative. So clearly 3 times negative 5 should equal negative 15. Another way you can kind of think through this is um, suppose that I have three $5 charges on my credit card. Well, three $5 charges should equal a $15 charge, you know, and we think of a charge on our credit card as a negative number. So just from kind of our everyday experience that shouldn't be too surprising. To think of a negative times a positive, um, you know, let's take something like negative 4 times 2. Well, remember that multiplication is commutative. We can multiply in any order we want to. So, I could always switch the order here and have 2 times negative 4, and we already decided that a positive times a negative should be negative. And so, since these are really the same, it shouldn't be too surprising that we get negative 8. So all we really have to do here is multiply the two numbers 4 and 2, and then, of course, attach a negative. Now this last situation, a negative times a negative, um, I think is a little less intuitive. It's, it doesn't kind of mesh with our everyday experience very well. What does it mean to multiply a negative times a negative? Now in math, whenever you're not sure about something, uh, a good strategy for trying to wrap your brain around it is to see if you can discover a pattern. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply the number negative 4 by various other numbers. And we're going to see if we can recognize a pattern. So 3 times negative 4 I know should be negative 12. If I take 2 times negative 4, I know that should be negative 8. 1 times negative 4 should be negative 4. And 0 times negative 4, we know 0 times anything is 0. And so you might be able to see where we're going with this. Let's try to see what we're doing each time we reduce this, uh, this integer that we're multiplying by, by 1. Well, going from 3 to 2, we basically just added 4. Going from multiplying by 2 to multiplying by 1, again, we added 4. And to go from here to here, we added 4. And so I think it's very reasonable to think that if I take this number I'm multiplying by and reduce it by another, um, and reduce it by one more, that I should follow the same pattern. So to go from here to here, I should expect that I should still add 4. Reduce it by one more, and I again should expect to add 4. And so just following this pattern indicates that yes, it seems that when I multiply a negative times a negative, I should get a positive. And that is in fact uh, what is true in general. 